so what we're going to do is we're going to try to do the photo restorer too with this image I have here uh, and get it to look like this, which I was able to do in Photopea. I will say this is the first area where I really feel Photopea just drags far behind uh, Photoshop. This is going to be a lot more of a hassle than you would typically have. Uh, so I did give you more time to do it because we're going to have to do some stuff I wouldn't normally do. So normally, uh, when I'm doing a photo restoration in Photoshop, what I do is I pretty much just use uh, the quick selection tool and I would select the areas I want to uh, cut out and and I'd go from there. But the problem is like if I just want to get the skin, um, Photopea gives you a really hard time removing areas. Like if I want to remove the hair, like it gives me a really hard time doing that and keeping the skin, especially in black and white. Uh, if I'm just trying to come in here, like it keeps grabbing on extra stuff I don't need. So um, that's a big issue. So you can use it for some things like I can get this, this large area or I can try to get it to kind of get the, the outline here and then use a mask. But uh, what we're going to find we're doing a lot is we're going to end up using masks and the Mark T tool a lot. So I'm going to try to grab it one more time. Okay. Um, one new tool you can use that we might not have used before or you might not have used before is called the too much is uh, just if you hit on the Q key it shows you what you have selected so like the stuff in red I don't have selected so if I hit that Q key uh, you can see it shows me like I've got all of this selected the backgrounds not selected at all so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer of this so I've got the new layer there and I have to go in and this is where it like becomes a pain if I turn this off I just want to do her skin tone so uh, like I said typically I turn this off and now maybe I can grab the hair uh, and if I see a cue you see it's just not letting me get as specific where Photoshop the algorithm works better so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to use a mask uh, and we've used masks before and we've said like if you paint the mask black uh, things go away so I've got a, a good brush I want not to be the hardest brush uh, but basically I'm going to come in and I'm going to do all the quick stuff first. Uh, I'm going to just come in with the mask here. And I'm going to get rid of what I don't want. And I'm just doing the big stuff first and then I'm going to get more refined. Uh, but this is the general process. Okay, and then after you get the big stuff, you should really zoom in and make the brush smaller and kind of go in and try to clean it up. So this is tedious, what I'm doing right now. So after I give you the general like kind of principles of doing this for one or two things, um, I'm not going to go through all of them because it's, it's basically a repeating process. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the end to kind of show you what I did at the end. Now in Photoshop, like this is teaching you the skills in Photoshop, we would not have to do this much work with the mask tool. In Photoshop, the algorithm is so much better at selecting things like uh, the outline. that you wouldn't have to spend as much time doing this because this is tedious and like you guys are just sitting there and you're like okay Mr. Braun let's get to it uh, but I'm going to do this one and then maybe I'll do one more like show you what I did for like the eyes or something because order is not important and the nice thing about the mask too is we can always come in and fix it later. So if we do go a little overboard with some of this, 
That is a okay. Are you going to post the video of how to do this? Yeah, I'm recording it right now, actually. And I'm going to post it um, after I finish recording. I'll get it processing and post it. Um, and I'm actually, I'm going to rush through this a little bit. Not that you should. But I am, so I'm going to zoom out. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job. Now, here's the here's the key. And this is what makes this kind of unique. We do a new layer now. And I don't really need this anymore except to hold control. So you got to hold the control key and click on our original thing. And that makes a selection up here. And what I can do now is I can do... Uh, a skin tone. So I'm going to do skin tone. I'm typing into Google colors. Um, and I want one that gives me numbers. Uh, if you didn't know, all these colors are associated with numbers. So like skin tones, uh, we can go pick one from here. It doesn't really matter which one. Uh, I would want to use for skin tone, so I'm going to do this FDC 786. So when I go to, to paint this in now, I want to paint with um, FD, what was it? FDC 786. And I think there was maybe a hashtag at the, oh no, there we go. So it gives me that skin tone that I just looked up. So there we go. Okay, so what I did was made a new layer. And I went down to the original picture of the cutout, and I, I just left clicked with the control. So I held control and clicked, and it you can see it's got like this little outline on it. So now I'm going to take that color with the paintbrush, and I'm just going to color over everything in here. And then after I color it, I'm going to tell it to multiply. And that brings it down onto the person. Then I'm going to steal the mask and drag it up here, just the mask, drag it up to that overlay, and I can turn off uh, this person because the original one we're never going to get rid of. So we're just doing overlays over and over again on the original person. And if we see areas that we need to go fix, we can always just go back to our mask now. Like I can tell from the mask that I need to fix where the eyes are and where the lips are. So I'll like go in and like, I don't want anything on the lips. So I'll go in and I'll just paint over the mask. So like I cut out to kind of get an idea of what I need for each color layer. You could actually skip that whole step. Like I'll show you if you want to, cause there's kind of two ways to think about this. And then I switch, switch to white if you went a little outside. You need to bring it back. Okay. Switching back to black. I wanna wanna get the eyes not to be the color of the skin. So this is kind of how you do it. You might wanna like do the eyebrows too. Like, you know, if you wanna go in and color the eyebrows later, you could take them out now. Um, I'll leave that up to you. How you wanna go about things like that. You see, I got an area up here uh, that I did not want to color out, so maybe I want to come in here and switch this brush to white to bring in the skin tone. And I can play with it too. If I look at the tone here, I can change the opacity for how intense I want it to be. So like, I don't want it all the way. I want to maybe drop the intensity a little. So I can go touch up. Uh, what I was saying about you can kind of go in and skip this step, we can come in and if I want like, let's say the lips to be red, I can go to get the red brush, get the red brush here. Uh, and I'm just gonna go to the lips. I'm gonna, you know, paint it red. It's important it's in a new layer, right? Cause if it's not in a new layer, that's bad. And I'm gonna go to multiply. 
which drags it down. I'm going to drop the opacity a little, get it just where I want it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw a mask straight onto this. I wanted a blank mask. Oops. Delete. So let's see, will it just let me put a mask on for the whole thing? I just want a mask. There we go. So it let me put a mask on for the whole thing there. And then I can use that mask to go in. And I can just get rid of everything I don't want in the mask with the black. Um, so the layer in which you decide to do this might matter. I'm just coming in. Make my brush a little smaller. And try to be as careful as I can. So this is tedious. That's why I only have you do one. It's kind of like the restoring. Um, the one thing though, this if this was Photoshop, I wouldn't have to do any of this stuff with the mask. I'd able I'd be able to select each thing perfectly with the uh, quick select tool. So that is the real difference. And then if I wanted to bring back some of that red, I'd just go in like so. Um, so that's the basic procedure, and you just keep making layers and keep going. Uh, I think doing it this way for the first one was nice just because it gave me the, the defined outlines, and it's going to be the same way for the background. But um, if I go here, th there's one more thing you can do at the end. Uh, and I'm even going to gonna get my pen out because you'll never remember this. So there are, to make a composite of all your layers, you do Alt, Alt, that's really thick, so I'm going to make it a little thinner, plus Control, Alt, Control, plus Shift, Shift, and then the letter E for Ember. So if you do an alt control shift E, what it does is it takes all these layers and a key thing for this is you have to be on that top layer. You can't do it like down here because it makes a composite of all the layers under it. So I go on the top layer and I do alt control shift E and what it does is you see right here it makes a layer that makes a composite of all the stuff underneath it. So I can do whatever I want to this layer. Like I could come to this layer and I could be like, woo, having a good time. Um, and it doesn't affect any of the stuff under it. It's just a composite of that layer. So what we're going to do with that, let's get back to it before I did any of that white stuff. Alt, Control, Shift, E. Okay. Um, what you can do with that is when you're all done getting it colored, you can add some fine details or toning like you're using makeup or blush. So you can take the brush and like I'm going to get a red and I'm going to get make the brush like, you know, the opacity and the flow of the brush way down. And I'm going to make it really soft. So I'm going to make it a soft brush and make the size a little bigger. And what I can do now is it, it, I can come over here and it's like adding makeup. Um, so I can just go here and give it a little, little touch, a little redness in the cheeks, you know, so you can do stuff like that. Or if you wanted to add a little extra tone of something, you can go get a brush, make it really soft, make the opacity really low and you can do touching. And the nice thing is when you do it on the composite, if you don't like it, you can just get rid of it. Um, so that is the basic procedure. Does anyone want me to go over any of the steps again? Like I said, this is the first, yeah, Manus, do you want it? Your, your thing's like on, but, oh yeah, your thing's on. I thought you had a question. Okay, so really, it, it's a procedural thing. I usually recommend doing the biggest stuff first, like the background and the person, and then, you know, moving down to the smaller items and putting them on top of the bigger ones. Um. As you can see, like, all you really need to do is make a layer with a mask and then multiply the color in. So you always do the multiply on the color and then you do the mask to clean it up. Uh, so it, it's really like kind of a form of painting. 
uh, just really fancy. Uh, so do you guys got any questions for me on this? No, okay, so this is kind of like, this isn't due till next week. Uh, I'm going to turn off the recording now and I'll post.